So we are currently in the month of February, so we have an excellent opportunity to talk, to talk a little bit about Valentine's Day. There are many different stories as to why and how this day of celebration started, but just like so many stories that are very, very old, nobody can really prove exactly what happened. And the truth of the matter is that no matter how it may have started, it's grown into a day that people all over the world celebrate with different traditions in many different ways. The purpose of this, uh, Valentine's Day is to celebrate love and friendship. So instead of telling you how this celebration of love ended up being called Valentine's Day, I'm going to tell you instead the story of Cupid and Psyche. You may or may not understand that many of the celebrations throughout the Wheel of the Year started out as something much different than what you celebrate today. And really, that's all right. Do you celebrate um, your birthday the same way each and every year? Or do you change the way you celebrate each year? If you're 16, you're probably not, ce you're probably not celebrating your birthday the same way you did when you were 8 or even 3. Everything changes all the time, and Valentine's Day is no exception. When you think of Cupid, you probably think of some cute little angel boy flying around shooting arrows into people that make them fall in love with each other. But that's not the way he was thought of a long time ago. No. He was a full-grown man and very mischievous. We're going to call it that, mischievous. He was, in fact, quite different, always tricking people uh, and, st and stirring up trouble and doing things he shouldn't. He would use his arrows to trick people into falling lo in love with each other whether they were already married or not. And sometimes he even caused people to hate each other. Oh yes, Cupid was once known as someone very different than what you probably think of him today. His mother's name was Aphrodite, the goddess of love. When you think of the goddess of love, you probably get a very warm feeling and may even think of how it feels when your own mother hugs you and makes everything all right with the world. Well, love is a funny thing and is something that some people search for all their lives. Some are even quite jealous of those who have love in their lives and they do not. Aphrodite is all of these things and many more. One thing she has long been known for is being jealous. Which brings us to Psyche. She was a mortal woman, a human, like me, like your mother, like many of the others you know. But she was beautiful. Think of the most beautiful woman you know. Maybe you've seen one on TV or in the movies that's really, really gorgeous. Well, she was even more beautiful than anyone you can possibly imagine. But she wasn't so very happy, I'm sorry to say. Because she was so beautiful, people were afraid to approach her or to talk to her. They thought they might not be good enough to talk to her, which is really, honestly, quite sad. The way someone looks should not tell us how we treat each other, but that is what happened. Psyche had two older sisters who were not as beautiful as she was, but were both married and mostly happy in their lives. You wouldn't think they would have any reason at all to be jealous of their younger sister. After all, they already had everything they could wish for. Psyche's parents, though, worried about what to do for their youngest daughter. It might have been different if she was happy being alone, but she wasn't. She wanted a husband because she was, so, because she was lonely and because she was so very tired of being alone with nobody to talk to at all. There was a small problem, though. Because Psyche was so beautiful, be people began to call her Aphrodite and they worshipped her instead of the goddess. When Aphrodite heard what was happening, she became very angry indeed. She called her son Cupid to her side and ordered him to make Psyche fall in love with a man who was not only ugly in appearance, but was also a mean man. He was a dirty man who rarely bathed and who spent his money on things that d he didn't need, so he was always broke. In other words, a loser. Cupid didn't really like his mother telling him what to do, but he didn't like having her nag at him either. Okay. So he went to see what was happening with Psyche and decided he would make his own decision what to do with her. In the meantime, 
Psyche's father was terribly unhappy because he was worried the gods were upset with him. So he went to an oracle or a priest of the god Apollo for advice. The oracle told the father that he must prepare Psyche for her funeral instead of for a wedding, as she would never marry a mortal man who was human. Uh, instead, the, or the oracle said she would marry a fierce snake-like monster with wings and a poisonous dart. The man loved his youngest daughter very much, but he was afraid of the gods, so he did what the oracle told him, abandoning Psyche on a huge boulder on the top of a mountain. Psyche told her mother and her father not to cry, because she was not afraid. She told them she was looking forward to meeting her new wonderful husband. Of course, we'll, not, we'll never know whether she really was afraid or not, but that's the way this story goes. Before long, the west wind gently pulled Psyche from her lonely rock where she sat all alone and transported her to a beautiful wooded area where she found an enchanted palace. Although she can hear friendly voices, she never sees anyone at all. Still, everything she needs is provided for her night and day. Every night she is visited by a man who she can feel and hear and talk with, but who she never sees. She falls deeply in love with the man and soon gets used to her very unusual life. Although he spends every night with her, he's always gone when the morning comes. Of course, we know this man is Cupid, don't we? What we don't know, and what we will never find out, is why Cupid didn't want Psyche to see him. When her older sisters found out about the wonderful life Psyche was living, they were very unhappy indeed. Instead of being happy for her and enjoying their own lives, they were terribly, terribly jealous. When they paid their sister a visit, they convinced her that her husband was a terrible beast just like the oracle had told their father, and that during the, the day when he was gone, he was doing terrible things. The sisters told Psyche that he was just waiting for her to have a baby so he could eat the child, and then he would eat her too. They told her that she must kill the man who was really a beast, and gave her a dagger to do the deed. They told her not to look, to just kill him as he slept. Now remember, when Psyche was growing up, people didn't talk to her because she was so beautiful. Everyone treated her more like she was a thing, an object, than a person. So she didn't really understand that people could lie and be cruel. Psyche was always honest because she never learned to lie. So she thought her sisters were telling her the truth and trying to protect her. That night, when Cupid fell asleep, Psyche did as her sister told her. But, he had, but he'd been a wonderful husband. So she couldn't just bring herself to kill him as he slept without at least looking first to make sure he was a beast. So she lit an oil lamp so she could see her husband. I'm guessing she was hoping her sisters were wrong. When she saw him, she was overwhelmed with excitement and happiness because not only was he not a monster, but he was gorgeous. She gasped and stepped back one step only to have one of Cupid's arrows graze her leg. Now she was even more in love with, with the god than she was before. But when the arrow cut her, she jiggled the oil lamp she was holding and it burned Cupid on the shoulder. He woke up and was very, very angry that Psyche had done exactly what he'd asked her not to do. He told her then that, he, that he'd injured himself with one of his own arrows and had fallen madly in love with her, but would not stay with her if he could not trust her. So he left her and went back to his mother, Aphrodite, who laughed at him, saying, See, I told you humans were no good. Ah, but Psyche was well and truly in love with her husband, and not just because of his arrow. And so she searched for him. Her story is really quite a long one, but what I will tell you is that after many trials, she found herself in front of Aphrodite. She begged the goddess of love for another chance, and Aphrodite agreed but only because she knew she would make it impossible for Psyche to do all the things she set out for her. There were four challenges Aphrodite gave Psyche to do to win her favor if she was ever to see Cupid again. Cupid, for his part, was still recovering from the oil lamp burn and his broken heart at, be at being betrayed by Psyche. The first task 
the psyche was to do was to separate a huge, I mean, we're talking huge pile of wheat, millet, poppy seed, uh, chickpeas, lentils, and beans in a very short amount of time. An ant took pity on her. Angry with Aphrodite's behavior, the ant called hundreds of other ants and got the job done very quickly. The next day, Aphrodite showed the girl a flock of golden sheep in the distance, commanding her to bring her back a tuft, that means a little bit, of the golden wool. These sheep, though, were not like the ones you might think of when you picture a sheep in your mind. No, these were wild beasts with sharp horns and hooves who would have trampled and skewered her. When she arrived there, a green reed in the river explained to Psyche how and when to gather the wool so the sheep wouldn't harm her, so she was able to complete the second task. Aphrodite was furious with Psyche because she was doing the impossible and accused her of getting help from Cupid. The third task Aphrodite gave to Psyche was to get a small jug of water from the river Styx, an icy cold stream way, way, way up in the mountains. It was a terrible task that no human could hope to do. There were giant snakes guarding the entrance and the water itself had the power of speech, telling her to stay away, stay away. Zeus's highest bird, a golden eagle, helped her to gather the water because Cupid had once helped him. And so Psyche completed three of the four tasks. Do you think this was good enough for Aphrodite? Probably not, huh? Instead of being pleased, she was even more furious. She was so mad. This time she sent Psyche, she sent Psyche to Hades with a, with a box to gather a small supply of beauty cream from Persephone. She was told not to look in the box over and over and over again. Psyche knew there was no way whatsoever that she, that she could do what was commanded of her. So instead she went to the top of a very tall tower to throw herself off and end her life. She knew there's no way she could do in this task that Aphrodite set for her. The tower though told her not to end her life and then told her how to find the entry to the underworld how to get around the many obstacles there would be in her path. And yes, there were many, uh, many obstacles Aphrodite put in her path. And how to treat the queen of the underworld, Persephone. There were all tricks to everything. All these Psyche did just as she was told. She got the beauty cream and was headed back to Aphrodite when she simply couldn't resist her curiosity any longer. She opened the box. Instead of beauty cream, the only thing in the box was the sleep of Hades, and so did Psyche fall to the ground in a deep, eternal sleep. Oh no! Isn't that a terrible ending to a Valentine's Day story? What does this have to do with love? Well, it's not the end, nor should you think the end of your story has come no matter how broken-hearted you may be in life. Remember to keep going until you have your happy ending. Cupid arrived on the scene because he had finally healed and had to find his lovely wife no matter what had happened between them. He took her to Olympus where he convinced Zeus, the king of gods, that his love was true. And so did Zeus give Psyche ambrosia, making her a goddess. Aphrodite and Cupid and Psyche eventually mended all the hurt feelings between them and Psyche gave birth to a daughter by the name of Pleasure. And so ends our story of Cupid and Psyche. Happy Cupid's Day.